Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I want to talk about uh, guide scopes and particularly my guide scope. Now around 18 months ago I decided I wanted to get a new guide st scope stroke wide field imaging scope to piggyback uh, on the back of my uh, Esprit 100. So I ended up buying um, a Red Cat, Red Cat 51 from Williams Optics. Great little scope and I piggybacked it on the top of my Esprit and yes, very overkill as a guide scope, but it was wide field imaging that I wanted to do as well. So uh, I used this for a while and it worked, what, what I seen, flawlessly. Certainly uh, no problems that I could see. And then I started, when I went pixel peeping in some of my images, that there were some elongated stars pretty much across the images that I couldn't really see at normal zoom. Anyway, after some investigation and head scratching, I found out it was flexure between the guide scope and the imaging scope. Now, the Red Cat, is, it's, a, it's a lovely scope, but it's only mounted by one ring at the back. Uh, one felt-lined ring and a mounting point on the bottom of the scope. Now, when you've got a heavy camera on the back and you've obviously got the lens at the front, there was obviously some flexure there. So I looked into how else I could mount it. And I, I thought, well, the best way, obviously, is tube rings, fixed tube rings. You've already got one at the back of the scope. I couldn't put another one at the front because on the Red Cat, the whole juice shield moves with the focuser. Great focuser, but it all moves together. So there was no way you could mount it within two tube rings. Tried to come up with other solutions. In the end, I just thought this isn't going to work. So uh, I went back to my trusty Evo guide. Uh, after that, which, you know, it is a guide scope. At the end of the day, that's what it's made for. It does the job perfectly. So I thought, well, how about wide field imaging with this? So I bought the flattener for it, which is the Starry Zona flattener, which allows you 55mm of bat focus. I had this mounted in 3D printed rings anyway. Uh, obviously, it's a lot lighter, on about 850 grams compared to 2 kilograms of the Red Cat. Absolutely no problem with guiding, as you'd expect. Focus, lock it off, job done. Then I thought, well, I'll stick a camera on the back and try and do some imaging. And that's when the problem started again for me. The focuser on this is pretty dire, to be quite honest. It feels smooth enough, but when you're actually focusing on this particular one, you can actually turn this almost half a turn before it actually engages in the thread. So when you reverse, it's going to move around half a turn before it starts to focus in the opposite direction. This just was, was no good. For guiding, no problem, because you're focusing and locking, forgetting. So that became a problem with this. Flexure, no problem, but th this one, the focuser became a problem. So then I started to think again, well, what I want is something that's across between the two scopes, something that's lightweight, got the focusing mechanism of the Red Cat, you know, we'll take a camera on the back, maybe got a tilt adjuster and flattener built in, it'd be great. Lo and behold, I came across this, which is the Ascar FMA 180 Pro. This one here. Now, I bought this second hand, it was on eBay, but the guy, had, he'd not used it, it was still in the box. So I got it for a, for a good price. Now, this is a 180mm scope. It's uh, f4.5 and it's got a flattener built into the back. It's got everything I wanted. It's only 40 mil aperture, which not really a problem because I use a guide scope with quite small pixels anyway, 2.4 micron pixels. So it wasn't going to alter my imaging scale too much. I think with this I'll have an imaging scale of around 2.8 arc seconds per pixel, which is exactly twice my main scope, which is 1.4 arc seconds per pixel. You do need 55 millimeter of back focus for the built-in flattener, but with these ZWO spacers, not a problem. It gives you the exact back focus needed to the camera. Now this does mount, again like the Red Cat, with a single couple of bolts and a single bar. So it's mounted at the back. And I thought, yeah, I know it's a lot lighter. It's just just about a, just under a kilogram, but I still don't want to take the chance of getting any flexure again. Now, the focusing mechanism on this is the same as the Red Cat in that it focuses the internal lens assembly, but it moves inside the dew shield. It slides up and down inside, so this stays static. Absolutely perfect. 
this was an absolute complete uh, mixture of the Evo Guide and the Red Cat all in one but being a lot lighter. So I could put this in tube rings and not use the foot, which is what I did. I then got Greg at Craftology 3D to 3D print me these tube rings and fitting the scope into them like so, if we get that right, clamp those down and now there's no way that's going to go anywhere, there's no way I'm going to get any flexure and it looks quite neat too. And obviously you can still focus because the mechanism moves inside of the dew shield and not out and not the whole thing like the red cat. So for me, this is my perfect guide and wide field imaging scope, the Ascar FMA 180 Pro. This is the Pro version. They did a version before this, which I think had a slightly different focal length, and it looked slightly different as well. I don't. Th I think it was a lot thinner at the front, but for all intents and purposes. I think it was pretty much the same scope, but it was a separate flattener. This one has now got the built-in flattener. I think there's six elements in this. I think it's actually three elements at the front, two elements as a reducer, and one element as a flattener at the back. And in these tube rings, mounted, uh, there's no way that's going to move, and there's no way I'm going to get any, well, I haven't got any flexure from this scope at all. So if anybody out there is looking for a, a multi-purpose small scope to piggyback, that's going to double as a perfect guide scope and a wide field imaging scope. I'd certainly look into this small, neat, compact uh, tilt adjuster. Uh, sorry, yes, I think there is a tilt adjuster on the back actually, but there's also a rotator built into it as well, so you can rotate your camera on the back. And then I think underneath this ring here, there's a tilt adjuster as well, so you can adjust the tilt if need be, but obviously as, as a guide scope and my imaging camera's got tilt adjuster on it anyway. So yes, an absolute cross of the Evo Guide and the Red Cat 51. So I hope you found that useful. Anybody out there who's looking for a multi-purpose scope to piggyback, uh, I'd certainly look at the Ascar FMA 180 Pro. It does exactly what it says on the tin. It certainly suits my needs after 18 months of trying to find the perfect dual purpose scope to piggyback. Um, this one seems to uh, work really well. So uh, if you like what you see and you like this content then please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and uh, I've got a few more videos to come pretty soon so keep an eye out. So until the next one clear skies see you soon.